Sag. Thank you so much for coming to your weekly love reading. This should resonate for Sun, Moon, Rising, or Venus. Those of you that are cross-watching, welcome, welcome. This can be your situation or your partner's. It kind of just depends. If you haven't already, please like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell if you'd like to receive alerts for when I post my readings. Also, too, please feel free to comment. Um, I really like what you guys have to write and interacting with you on, you know, that one-on-one -on -one basis. So, and uh, let's go ahead and hop into your reading. Oh, um, something that I did want to mention because I've been trying to, I don't know, like, give you a message prior to the cards coming out. And one of the things that I wanted to know was all about de divine timing, okay? And everything, you know, the divine brings everything in the right time, right? Um, nothing comes before we are prepared and it doesn't leave too early. So it's always about trusting, you know, the perfect timing and knowing that it's coming along. And I don't think that for whatever reason, whatever's going on right now, and I don't know why I'm telling you this, but you shouldn't doubt that. All of the offerings, you know, it doesn't mean like, or giving yourself up to like, let's say like divine timing, right? That doesn't necessarily mean um, negativity won't ever come, right? But you are the one that can free your own self from the prison, right? From that, it's almost like being stuck in our head and really restore, you know, your faith and confidence. So just kind of keep that in mind that, of course, like, shit's going to happen. There's going to be hiccups, but that's okay. All right, um, rant over. Let's go ahead and just hop right into your reading, okay, guys? All right, Sag, Sag, Sag. Who is uh, Sag dealing with? Who is Sag dealing with romantically? Okay, Ten of Cups. You know, Sag, this is beautiful. So obviously... You're very happy right now, possibly dealing with a Pisces or someone that has a, a Mars in Pisces. Um, how does Sag feel about this person? How does Sagittarius feel about their person of interest romantically? Okay, the Chariot. Or you also can be dealing with a Cancer. Okay, because we do have the Chariot here. What is the current issue or situation with Sagittarius and their person of interest? What is the current issue or situation that one just shot out the world beautiful capricorn um aquarius scorpio taurus or leo that's all the signs that are associated with the world some of you may be like well god damn that's like the whole you know almost half the zodiac true but you know i'm just relaying those messages um what is it a block or external influence for sagittarius and their person of interest with a block, okay, Nine of Pentacles, possibly a um, Venus in Virgo, or it can simply be the fact that money is an issue, or even that somebody needs to be single in order to move on, right? Um, what is, whoa, hold on, that was kind of interesting. What's the best potential outcome here for Sag and their person of interest romantically? Okay, ooh, the fool. Yo, this is dope. I'm trying to remember who else got the full too. There was somebody else that received um, the full energy as well. And I can't remember who it was. So first things first. Okay. And I do, I'm sharing this with you guys. Top of the deck is the two of cups. Bottom of the deck is the two of pentacles. <clears throat> Let me say this really quick. I feel like your partner possibly has a cancer Venus or a Venus in cancer or, you know, with that two of pentacles also, that can definitely be Jupiter in um, Jupiter in Capricorn. But I do want to say this. They're very much a peaceful lover. Like, there's a lot of desire and harmony. They're very gentle, um, you know, diplomatic, warm, peaceful, sensitive, right? Sometimes I think that they can be too dependent, which probably stresses you out a little bit. Um, or they do have a very passive-aggressive nature where I think Sag, like... Much like Gemini, right? We're like, oh, no, we're aggressive, aggressive. Don't get it twisted, right? Where I think that this person tends to beat around the bush a little bit. Like, they don't just come right at you that they want something. Um, this person, however, will definitely bend over backwards uh, to keep the relationship running and also, you know, offer you a level of um, emotional security. So with the twos here, there's definitely something, right, about 
duality and partnership, you know, division, conquer and balance. And I feel like, you know, somebody is really trying to make a decision right now with what they want versus what they their heart wants, because sometimes it's always different, right? Um, and I feel like somebody who has a Jupiter in Capricorn, um, how their their expansion is really with themselves. It's like, I need to get my money right before I can do anything. And I'm not going to, I know, and I said this to somebody earlier today, but I'm not mad at that. If somebody wants to get their life together prior to committing to somebody, like I'm here for that. And I think too many times, you know, we want a relationship so bad, but then when we have the person and they don't have everything we have, we're like, well, what the hell? You know what I mean? Like, oh, look, they're not doing anything or look, oh, they're not put together. But it's just like, well, we knew that when we asked them to commit and they said to us, hey, you know, it's kind of up in the air. So I like the fact that this person is very much in their head about what can be offered and what they are doing. Like, I, I find that very attractive that they're thinking about, okay, well, you know, how does this go hand in hand? So I just want to throw that out there, especially for those Sages that are dealing with an earth sign. You know, they want to make sure that their money is right prior to committing because they can't offer you something if they don't have it, right? Which I think is dope. I'm going to be honest. I really, I really, really enjoy that aspect of it. Um, I do think if you're dealing with a Cancer, they're very nurturing, emotional, compassionate, you know, they may be a little bit clingy and possibly a homebody and domestic. However, this person does have a strong tie to family and their home. And, you know, if you're dealing with a Pisces, you know, this is somebody who's dreamy, romantic, um, sensitive. They may be irritable at times or absent-minded, a little bit insecure. And I feel like, you know, you, Sag, are helping them through that. Um I do feel like your partner offers you a level of support and true love and compassion that's very much linked to multiple lives, right? It's not just this life, and that's maybe why you feel so connected to them, but it's also a soulmate, you know, the second you lay eyes on them, you're like, wow, this person is very special. This person, you know, has um, a lot to a lot to offer, right? It's, it, it's very surprising how much, you know, what they have. Um, also too, this person may be in like a level of quality control, an auditor, uh, maybe doing something in networking, software, possible transportation, whether that's bus, train, uh, flight, uh, anything of that nature, maybe they're a flight attendant or a pilot or, you know, drive a bus or drive a garbage truck. It's, it's something of that nature where they're still kind of like out and about. Okay. All right. Enough being said, let's keep it pushing. All right. Ten of cups. Obviously there's, there's this, there's a very, uh, there's a level of happiness with this person where they're very upbeat and how they want to move forward with you or how they look or how they approach things. So especially when it comes to you, is it a very happy or positive way? Um, this person also may be a Leo because we have strength here. You know, I think that this person, you know, really has to, for them, especially with Sag, like you guys have such a strong personality, right? It's like they have to come out and they have to show their strength, right? Um, this person could be a dentist, human resources, you know, uh, they may care for animals possibly or in the public eye, okay? However, you know, we want to say it, this person is very much into embracing their self-expression and their creativity. Um, you may have met them at a party or an event or something like that. Now, they may be a little bit defensive at first and feel like they have to protect themselves constantly. Like you may feel like they have a shield up and that, you know, this person can come across as overly... Uh, how do you say it? Um, overly like confident, right? Like their ego is definitely leading, right? However, what's crazy about this person is they're actually like, if they portray one thing on the outside very strongly, usually on the inside, it's, it's different. So I feel like this person, if they're coming out of their shell and they're being very like trying to be very dominant in some sense, it's because in the inside, it's like, they're very insecure or they may have, you know, some things that they question um, about themselves. 
I do get that strongly. Also, too, you know, this person does want to take the lead with love and they're willing to experience a lot of excitement, but then they also, you know, they don't like to be bored. Give me more information. What are they being strong about? Ace of Cups. It's almost like they're trying to fight offering you the Ace of Cups. It's like they're trying to keep that, you know, behind their back and not necessarily showing you, you know, their hand. Why? 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 Because of the Ace of Swords. So this may be a brand new relationship that's starting or um, something that kind of developed almost out of nowhere. But I feel like you and this person, you know, there is talks. There's open communication here. There's a level of truth that's revealed. Um, it also can be that you and this person kind of sat there and talked about, hey, like, what makes you tick? You know what I mean? What makes you happy? What makes you sad? You know, um, this person definitely offers you a level of mental stimulation but I also feel like, you know, it's a lot of sunshines and rainbows. Like there's a level of fear in avoiding, you know, unpleasant events and they're very reassuring, right? And also too, I feel like they're very secretive with a lot of their things where you sad, you're like, what the fuck is really going on with this person? What are they really doing? And Leo may be coming in strongly because I do have the sun here as well as the uh, five of cups. Five of cups is... Uh, Mars and Scorpio. But again, I feel like what they're hiding or what they need a level of reassurance on is um, themselves. That's what I'm getting strongly because think about it. The sun is matters of the heart and that's also the I am, right? That's about that person, who they are, how they kind of like internalize everything. Okay, so back at it like a crack at it. Let's go ahead and keep it pushing. All right. One more card here, please. For Sag, this person of interest. Sag, this person of interest. Nine of Cups. You guys definitely can be dealing with the Sagittarius. I am going to say this. Um, Nine of Cups, that's Jupiter and Pisces. Now, Jupiter and Pisces is dope. And the reason I think Jupiter and Pisces is dope is that this person has a very optimistic outlook on things. Even if they're not necessarily expressing that to you, their outlook with, you know, how things grow or how things expand is crazy, right? Um, also, too, this person is somebody who has the ability of visualizing it and then turning that into reality. And I feel like you and this person, like, you make them very happy. There's an abundance of happiness and emotions between you and them. Okay, chariot. Where's this chariot going? Why do they feel? Where's the chariot going for how Sag feels about their person of interest? Yo, Empress. Hi, how you doing? Okay. Uh, Libra or Taurus. You know, I feel like you sense that this relationship is very different, right? You sense that there is something very nurturing and caring and giving about this person. I am getting that strongly. Um, this person definitely, you know, you feel like is, is, uh, they possibly are at a distance. I want to throw that out there. Uh, that's the first thing. The second thing I do want to notice too, is they may be from a different cultural background than you are, especially with the chariot. Um, but I feel like for you, either you feel like they treat you like the empress, like they cater to your needs. They treat you like a queen, but not only the, you know, a queen, but the queen, right? It also can be, too, the fact that this person really is all about teamwork and creativity and groups and family and working towards that and pushing in that type of direction. More information here on how Sag, okay, justice. This can also be somebody that, you know, you're married to or somebody that you and this person, especially Libra, right, you guys have mentioned, like, hey, what about getting married? You know, I don't doubt for a second that this person said, hey, I'd marry you tomorrow. You know what I mean? Like, this person is very much, I can tell based on whatever cards are coming up, it's really beautiful with how they feel about you. And this may be a feeling that they've held back. However, with judgment, there's Scorpio, Scorpio or Capricorn. Um, this person may be coming back, back around if it's not, you know, a brand new person 
it, or this could be somebody from a um, past life. But something else I do want to note, I do want to note is this. Um, with judgment here, I feel like this person definitely says things like, or judgment. With judgment, this person, like, they say things that shock people. So they definitely can be somebody who will randomly say something and they shock you every time. Like, oh my God, did that just really come out of their mouth? Like, how could they say that? Um, you also can be dealing with a Virgo or an Aries. And you may be dealing with a Gemini because, you know, with the magician here and the Nine of Swords, the Nine of Swords is Mars and Gemini, you know, this person very much or you may be very much in your head about exactly what this person wants and where you go. Like, what does this look like? When are they going to take, you know, a different level of action or when are you supposed to take a level of action? They also could work nights possibly with the Nine of Swords. Maybe they don't get much sleep because they're always up talking and thinking. Um, what is Sag like about this person of interest? Okay, the Seven of Cups. You know, I think what you like about that and that Scorpio, Venus and Scorpio, I think that this person, one, is a freak, okay? Anyone that has a Venus and Scorpio, every time I hear that, my eyebrow goes up like, oh, you a freak. You're a freak freak. Not just kind of like a lightweight freak, but like freak freak, right? But I feel like, you know, the possibilities are endless. And I think that you're seeing that, that this person continues to surprise you and you never know what you're going to get next. Kind of like, you know, it's like a box of chocolates. What the hell is his name? Forrest Gump? Oh my God, what a mess. Either way, like, you like the fact that they're not predictable. You like the fact that there's a lot of other things, you know, that you still have to see with this person. Okay? That's uh, the chariot, right? There's the chariot again. There's cancer. Cancer's like, wait a minute. However, they do provide you a level of stability, even though there are things up in the air where it's just like, you know, wow, this is different, wow, this is changing, wow, this is crazy, you know what I mean? This person is here kind of like shaking up your life a little bit and then like rolling the dice and seeing where it goes. And I think for you, you're enjoying it because it is kind of that cat and mouse game and they're offering you um, that stimulation that I don't think a lot of people can offer you, I'm gonna be honest. What is Sag not like about their person of interest? Death, they may be a Scorpio. There may be, um, you know, some, something that needs to change with them or something that needs to end. What needs to end with them? And it can be a lack of sex, but with the Scorpio Venus, I highly doubt that's the issue. Unless you're out of distance, then I can see that. But why, uh, what needs to end? What does Sag want to end? What do they want um, the, their person of interest to end? One more time. What does Sag want their person of interest to stop? What do they want? Okay. The Four of Swords. I think for you, it's almost like, okay, and this is um, Jupiter and Libra. It's like, I'm tired of thinking about it. I want you to take action on it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, these words are great. And yeah, they're exciting me. And yeah, they're doing something for me. I'm getting butterflies and tingles and all that. However, what's coming from that? What does uh, Sag want to come from that? What needs to be transformed with this person? The Four of Wands. Beautiful. Look at that. And that's Venus and Aries. That's this person no longer being in their head but also taking a level of action. This is also you going to this person. This is having a level of stability, but it's not just swords. It's just not an idea of it, but now it's something physical that you and this person can touch. I am getting that strongly. And I'm telling you, you may be dealing with a Gemini because the bottom of the deck right now is the lovers. Okay, I just want to show you that. Um... Now, for the issue or the situation at hand, we do have the world here. So why, what, what's, what's ending with the world? What's coming to conclusion? It's coming to conclusion here for Sag and the person of interest. The Prince of Wands, possibly an Aries, or, or I'm sorry, a Sag or a uh, Gemini. You know, I think that there's something to learn here. And I feel like if you're dealing with a Gemini, 
what's coming to an end is the fact of the overthinking. And now there's um, a set of action here. Um, also with the world, there's something to learn. What needs to be learned here? The hermit. Okay. Um, that is Virgo. Let me ask. How does Sag feel about this? How does Sag feel about getting to end? Whoa, hella shit just flew out. You know, I think for you, honestly, I'm going to be honest here. I think that you're ready. For, if this person is in a different situation, I think you're ready for that to end. I think you're tired of waiting. I think you're tired of not talking about it. I think that with the seven of pentacles here, it's just like it's too much. You know, you want this person to make a decision and for you to move forward past the seven of pentacles. I definitely feel like, you know, the seven of pentacles for whatever reason, this is really, you know, it's like you're telling them like, how much longer are you going to wait? You know what I mean? This is Saturn and Taurus. And I feel like this person is trying to do the right thing, but how you feel is like this needs to, you know, you need to cut it. Like I've waited, I've waited too long. This is Libra and Cancer. I need you to make a decision and make one quick. Right. I need you really to start something new instead of, you know, continuing down this other cycle. And it may have to do with this person leaving behind, you know, their family and moving. This may be, you know, uh, them retracing their steps and really figuring out what's the next, what's that next thing? Because how does a person feel about, how does their person feel about, um, cutting the waiting period and having foreign movement was sad. They know it has to be done. Let me just say that. The two of pentacles. You see, it's like they're still up in the air because there's something that they're juggling here. Well, let's figure out what the hell they're juggling. And this can be two people as well. I mean, I don't like to just jump to conclusions and be like, yo, they're dealing with a third party or there is some type of third party situation, you know, here where this person is talking to somebody else or maybe they have a family. So let's just ask, um, why is the two of pentacles here? Because of the star card. You know, I think that this person has to be completely single. I look at the star card as a single card. It's like you and this person cannot completely commit with one another until they're completely single. Am I right? Am I right with what I'm telling? Yeah, two of wands. It's like they have to pick a direction that they want to go with, you know, or else if they don't choose, okay? And um, this is actually Mars and um, Aries. They have to take action on a very specific choice. They have to do it. They can't continue to have the same routine where, you know, they are in love with you, but then, you know, they're at home taking care of, you know, their other obligations. It's like, it doesn't work like that. They have to make a choice. One more time here. And again, look at the twos. Two, two. There's something with two here. There's a level of duality partnership, but there's also some type of conflict between the two of you. What, um, how does, uh, one more time. How does Sag feel about um, them ending? Yeah, temperance. You're over here like, look, I'm not happy with what's going on. And until you fix it, we can't be together. Like, we can be platonic. We can chill. We can be cool. However, I'm going to sit here looking fly, drinking my drink. Okay, mimosa, how you doing? You know, wine, whatever. And it's just like, what are you going to do? What are you going to choose? Because I'm not somebody who is a second option. I'm not a side. Sorry, do I look like, you know... Uh, mashed potatoes or a biscuit. No, I'm the whole entree. Like, don't get it twisted. And I feel like that's your frustration with them. How do they feel about making this choice? How do they feel about making this choice? The Eight of Swords. Goddamn Gemini, and I'm a Gemini. You know, it's just the fact that they're, and this is Jupiter and Gemini, they're stressed out. They just don't know exactly what to do or which direction to go. So in, instead of doing making a decision, they're in their head, they're processing it. I'm telling you, this person is going back and forth with what is the right thing to do, what's best for everyone, where do I go from here, you know what I mean? They have the two of cups at the bottom, which is definitely you and them. 
Then they have the page of um, cups at the top. It's like they understand that this distance that they're putting between you guys is creating a level of jealousy. And it's not jealousy necessarily on your end, but it's also jealousy on their end because they know that if they're not completely locking it down with you, then you're like, fuck it, I'm going to go out and have a good time, which you should be doing. If they're not willing to lock it down like they're supposed to, then what else are you supposed to do? And then this is making them very upset that they're getting a level of jealousy because they can't offer you exactly what you deserve because they know that they have to end something first prior to even, you know, approaching you with that type of situation. And what's even more jacked up is the fact that they really do care about you. They really do love you. Look at that two of cups or six of cups. I'm sorry. That's Scorpio. It's like, there is a deep desire here for a level of transformation when it comes to love. However, this person may have a family that involves kids, which is what is really prolonging the situation, which is really making things more challenging than I think that they're supposed to be. Now, the Nine of Pentacles is here, and I think we just figured out why the Nine of Pentacles is here. The Nine of Pentacles is here because this person has to be single. Somebody has to be single and have their money right and their finances right prior to doing anything. Look, five of pentacles. They have to leave that situation behind. If it's not working, they have to go, right? There's obviously a difficulty here, you know, uh, a lack of something. And it's time for them to realize that there's no way out besides leaving. And this is Mercury and Taurus. It's like they have to communicate that with you that you know, I have to leave whatever my situation is. And mind you, they view themselves as single, even if they're not single, which is crazy. How does Sag feel about this? How does Sag feel about them needing to be single, them needing to leave behind that life? Three of Pentacles. You're like, yes, that's right. In order for there to be a level of stability, Mars and Capricorn, in order that for there to be anything that is new that can start, Ace of Pentacles, you have to wait until they've ended the secrecy, okay, Taurus or um, Cancer, with their third party. They have to be able to expose everything. They can't continue just to sit in a room and say, okay, tomorrow's a different day. Let's see how this goes. How does their person feel about this? How does Sagittarius person of interest feel about this? The Three of Swords. It's like they're crushed. They're heartbroken. And it can be you, Sag, that may have a third-party situation where you're like, fuck, I need to leave my family or I need to leave, you know, my situation at home alone, right? It can be reversed, so just kind of take that into consideration. But I do think that this person feels like either way it ends in heartbreak. Either way, there's something very cold that's happening here. And it's going to hurt somebody. And I don't think that this person wants to hurt anybody, especially if there's somebody who's a nurturer. You know what I mean? Saturn and Libra, they feel like this is a very cold, harsh truth that's coming. And it's very black and white. Why do they feel like the Three of Swords? Because of the Seven of Pentacles. They're just really tired. I feel like it's very emotionally draining for them. And they're just, they're ready to be done. As your outcome, you do have the fool. So I just want to say this, uh, those of you that this, this is enough, um, I love you guys. And I'm so sorry for putting out your readings a little bit late or, you know, very late. I, I totally apologize. And I just wanted to tell you that I really do appreciate every single one of you. And thank you so much for your patience with me. And um, I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.